click back and it went survivor specialist phil and alexa are back and i accidentally clicked the start button when neither of us were ready so not that <laughs> that really are. makes a difference but oops um anyway tonight's episodes were absolutely incredible if you're not digging age of extinction now you probably should stop watching the season and it ended with wendy hugging jeff so what more can you ask for um Wendy goes out hugging Jeff. I think a lot of people had that, which is really funny for the prop bet game. And next week, we're finally going to see Extinction Island pay off. So, um, Alexa, let's start these two hours. What do you got for me? Yeah, we have a lot to unpack. I have three pages worth of notes. Um, I guess this one we kind of have to go chronologically. Like, I, <laughs> when Aubrey went home, I both almost forgot she was in the season – and she has, if, if we're counting this as one episode, she has like 20 confessionals. Like she definitely got 10 confessionals in one episode. Um, everyone spoke tonight except for Aurora. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I know she didn't speak. Um, Julia spoke. We, we, have, we have a ton to talk about. Julia spoke twice. Um, the, the first one I think was something, you know, she, she's probably not answered by what she got. But anyways, we'll get there. Um, yeah, Aubrey, I was like, oh my gosh, Aubrey's playing. And then she gets completely just like, pulled apart by these newbies mm -hmm. and then by the time wendy goes home i forgot aubrey like had even been on my screen 45 minutes prior like there was so much going on tonight um i guess we start from the beginning we hit a ton of prop bets tonight or we're like en route to hitting a bunch of prop bets um but yeah i mean let's get into it we everyone who had wendy pretty low in the power rankings i think i think most people at least in our power rankings game had her at least in like their bottom three or so but if you had Wendy winning in your prop bet hugging Jeff, I know uh, Robert texted us the second that happened. Mm -hmm. We got like five tweets at us. I like that that's like our thing. Um, and it was like, it, it was perfect. It was like a cute little side hug. Everyone was like loving her. She got the send off that I wanted. I didn't want this to be a big chicken episode. I think no one wanted this to be a big chicken episode. And she went out with like, she, she was happy. Like she, she, I think she was happy with the whole experience um, versus Aubrey, who was just shook. Oh, yeah. Well, they completely <laughs> played Aubrey. And for anybody keeping track at home and who's calling me not intelligent for saying Victoria is going to win, who got the credit for the Aubrey boot? It was Victoria. Victoria I, got is anyone, I, don't, I don't think anyone's telling you you're not intelligent for that. I think Victoria cr is crushing it tonight. Well, yeah, tonight, but I'm saying before tonight, everybody, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know. I feel like last, I mean, maybe the comment, I didn't read the comments, but I, I was pretty on board with her last week. And tonight she really blew it out of the water. Yeah, she was amazing tonight. Um, she got all the credit for the Aubrey boot. This was so well edited. And this is something that those who like obsess over the fact that people don't get confessionals or they want an even amount of confessionals before that first tribal council we had Aubrey get every single confessional and the entire thing was from her point of view, which was absolutely amazing because we knew that she had an idol. We knew she had the extra vote. We mm -hmm. knew that she wanted to get rid of one of the guys that Wendy was also a possibility and that she could go home. And we didn't need to hear from anybody else because it made it so much more dramatic because every single possibility was available when they walked into that tribal council. And when Aubrey went home, she was as floored as I think many viewers were because I was almost fully expecting it to be Wendy going home, especially after the scene where Aubrey and Wendy were talking to each other and Victoria was sitting there and we got like nothing. Victoria must have done some serious work on Wendy after that because or before that to get Wendy to say absolutely nothing to Aubrey at that moment. Cause that was so bizarre. And I'm like, well, if you can't get her to open up in this situation, just vote her off. Both women should vote off Wendy right now. But Victoria definitely had something up her sleeve with Wendy already at that point. Yeah. I think they, cause we saw a little powwow. Um, I feel like there was a, either a lot of time or just a lot of content in between them losing that immunity challenge and then them actually going to tribal council because we see a quick powwow when Aubrey's talking to the viewers and everyone's like, it's Aubrey. Right. And Wendy was like, Wendy was just a part of that. And that seems totally normal. Mm -hmm. And what, what I guess helped with Wendy is that I think cause this is kind of goes back to the conversation where David was like, you're playing a ring. Right. And she was like, yeah, definitely. Like her just style of game is just completely different from ever anyone else who is playing. So Wendy having zero reaction or saying nothing 
was almost like normal for Wendy. Like I was like, this is yeah. probably what it's like for them to try to strategize with her. Um, and Victoria, I, I would love, I mean, I would love to talk to Victoria when this season's over, but if for one question other, like, oh God, I, I can't speak tonight. If, if there's anything I want to ask Victoria, it's did she, like you said, did she know that she was playing this with Wendy or was she just like, oh my God, this maybe isn't the right call. She totally had to have known because they had talked about it prior and Victoria wasn't pushing it anymore. Mm -hmm. Victoria saw this going down and she was like, there's nothing, I'm, I'm not touching this. And it was like, the two of them were like trying to talk to a brick wall. Like that must've yeah. been difficult for all parties. Um, but yeah, I knew, I mean, we knew that there was no threat of Eric going home. I don't think Eric, I think Eric had a really good episode too. Um, but they played Aubrey like a fiddle. And to your point, like this entire um, leading up to this tribal council was all from Aubrey's point of view. But we were tipped off that this was coming earlier in the episode when Victoria, Gavin, and Eric were like, Victoria's going to go be Aubrey's best friend and convince her to get rid of Wendy. And that all happened perfectly. And that, I, I feel like that, that's pretty rare where that plan exists for that long and it's that extensive. And they took out a three-time player. Yeah, and it worked perfectly. And it was like the Ben episode without the extremity of the Ben mm, episode. Yeah. Because it was, you know, that that whole buildup of you're going to be our secret agent. But like I keep on saying, and it happened again in the second part, the person that we heard from on comma who was going to eventually side with Lesu to vote out Wendy, the person we hear from that says, I don't want to go to Rocks, isn't Eric and it isn't Gavin, it's Victoria. Mm -hmm. And so, again, like Victoria, despite the fact that every single one of them voted out Wendy on the revote, Victoria was the one that told the audience, don't trust me because I'm not going to do it. And she's like a little villain. Ooh. But all tonight, all right. All I, I you said oh, so, villain, yeah, I, I assume you were saying villainous. <laughs> I just said, yeah, villainous. And and the thing is, like, tonight, I think she's a clear MVP. There's no doubt in anybody's mind because she made the Aubrey thing happen because she made Aubrey believe in her. And if Aubrey didn't believe in her, then then this doesn't work. And Aubrey's still in the game because Aubrey plays her idol. Like, think about that. We have a third-time player with an idol and an extra vote who got the wool pulled over their eyes so hard they didn't play any of it. That's how much she trusted Victoria. And that's what that's what's so like interesting about Aubrey's game, and what's so amazing about Aubrey as a player. She was like, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna bring my idol." Like this very well could be happening, but was just kind of saying that for the sake of like saying another option in a confessional because clearly she was floored. And we have this confessional, I think, right before we go to tribal, and Aubrey's like, "I don't know how to play from the top. I have no idea what I'm doing here." And you see this on Extinction Island. That, that's almost like more how she knows how to play. And so when she has two advantages to her name, she's like shaken. So it's, it's really interesting to see that because we've always taught people, like people have always talked about that. She's super aware of it, but it's really crazy to see that because normally when people are playing from the top, they're very confident. She was on the top and or quote unquote, sort of on the top. And she like actively did not know what to do. It was, it, it was really, um, it was just really cool to watch because you don't really see it from that angle. Um, and I'm glad yeah. you brought up, I know we're, we're bouncing everywhere here, but I'm glad you brought up Victoria not wanting to go to Rocks. When she said that, I was like, how is she the only person here who doesn't want to go to Rocks? Like, there's, half of them have never played with each other. You see Eric saying to War Dog and David, and he's like, I've literally never spoken to you, to, to you two before. Like, hopefully we can go to the merge together. And Victoria's the only one to be like, yeah, guys, I'm not really about this. I totally would have done the exact same thing well and everybody ended up voting out wendy because i think what they yeah. were i think what they were all worried about was that that manu lesu whatever was gonna gun for one of them and gavin and eric figured it would be one of them and they were trying to get everybody on the come on guys you would never want to vote one of us out we'd go to rocks for you because they were fearing that it was going to be them once mm -hmm. it was wendy it was like a get out of jail free card it's a peace offering you know what i mean yeah it's okay, Wendy, like, you're not really one of us, despite the fact that you helped us get rid of Aubrey, but we just needed you for that. And you're not one of the Lesu people. None, nobody wants to go to Rocks for you. Like, they would have gone to Rocks for Lauren, had mm -hmm. Lauren. Like, once I saw Wardog's name not come up, I was like, Wendy's going home. Because there's no way Wardog or Lauren or Kelly flip. And I think Eric must have been the one when he kneeled behind Wardog and David. He must have said to them, 
let's just vote for Wendy because there's no reason we should all draw rocks for her because if they would have said it to him first, I think he might've put up some sort of fight, but I think it was him realizing like, look, we can get rid of, we're getting rid of a Manu either way. Why should we put the three comma at risk? And then it's three versus three original comma and original Manu. Yeah. As soon as Wendy was like, said she was in the middle, I was like, this is too easy. Like all parties are just going to be able to converge on this really quickly. And um, when they, right before they're doing the revote, it's Lauren of all people, like Lauren, who's one of the two options of going home, who gets up and starts talking to Gavin, who she's probably never even made eye contact with before. So yeah. Lauren was like, I think all parties, as soon as that first vote happened, they were like, this, I, I feel like we know what we're doing here. Well, let's just get rid of Wendy. And you see Wendy just sitting there speaking to nobody in the middle. So that was, I mean, that, that, I thought that was pretty clear. And the crazy thing is, I don't even think Wendy cares that she got voted out. And I'm she not saying like, it really is I think she, I think she liked she wanted the experience, I guess. Yeah, I'm not saying that as a bad thing because clearly she still wants to be in the game because she walked over and picked up the torch and went to Extinction Island. But I don't think she cared at all that she got voted out of the game. I think she oh. was... She was Wendy, amped. Wendy wasn't playing to win. And 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 I, I, I don't really think there's any arguing that. She wasn't trying to win Survivor. She was out there for the experience. She was out there to do whatever the hell Wendy wanted to do, but she wasn't trying to win. And that's fine. I'm okay if there's people like that as long as they're entertaining and as long as they're kind of like what Wendy just was. But it's interesting to see in such a heated tribal council, seven people so desperate to not go home and Wendy to just be like, well, ah, this is fun, like whatever. Um, but also David lied to her in that tribal, which is so funny. And he tried mm. to pull a fast one on her and say, hey, we're voting for blah, 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 if you want to do it. Because it was right after Wendy said to him, there's a spot for you with us. And so he thought he had her. And then it was funny when the four votes came up for Wendy and she just turned and looked at him and gave him that look of like, <laughs> you thought you were going to get me, you idiot. But it's, it's kind of funny that she still ends up going home anyway, but at least it wasn't by her own hand. She didn't pull the Tyson of like, I just want to get a hot dog in my mouth. Like she just, she actually stuck with her guns and uh, went out because there was really, she had no, nothing left that she could do. Yeah. And you know what? I don't even think she looked at the second sign. She looked at the, you can go home sign. The other sign could have said like jump into a volcano and she would have known because she walked right into that. So yeah. they're casting appropriately. Jeff's whole thing was, I don't want to cast anybody who's going to go home. Everyone has just waltzed right over there. Um, we spend a lot of time on Extinction Island, too. This was a very twist-heavy episode. So I feel like this is an episode that's going to be pretty divisive between people who prefer old-school Survivor and new-school Survivor. A lot going on on Extinction Island. Tensions are very high. There's a lot of um, advantages. How do you feel about the Rick advantage? That's the big Here's one. Here's how I feel right now. Anybody who thinks – anybody who's so invested in old school Survivor that they didn't actually find tonight to be entertaining great TV or at least fun TV, the future is now, old man, and, like, move on. Like, then just don't watch it. Because I personally believe that – I'm a huge old school survivor defender. I love the old seasons. I mean, China's my favorite and I consider that old school Amazon. I love the first three. I used to get in arguments with Will all the time about how great Africa and Australia and Borneo are, but tonight was fantastic TV that those two hours flew by everything in there led to something like it all just kept on building. And what I loved so much about the way that it kept on building was that these twists came in at Extinction Island, and as somebody who was really worried that Extinction Island was going to have too much impact on the regular game, I wasn't bothered at all because these people aren't actually getting the advantage. It's the people in the game who are getting the advantage. And I said this back when Malcolm had the Game Changers thing happen to him, which we saw again tonight, that it sucks. It, it, that twist is a short-sighted twist because it's going to make epic TV in the moment but could suck further down the road because you lose a big character or a winner. And so that sucked for Game Changers because once Malcolm went, that tribe got decimated and then the game was over. This time, it happened late enough in the season that after this happened, one tribe can't now get decimated because they're actually merging right away. So I'm okay with the way that this worked out this time. It's still a short-sighted twist, but I think in the long run, it's going to work out for them on this season, whereas it didn't in Game Changers. So I know you asked about the Rick thing, and I'll get there, but I think that every twist tonight was fine. 
because it didn't actually nobody on extinction island is in better shape because of the twist except for keith but he's only hindering one person which is fine by me because if you got voted out i don't care how hard it is for you to get back in the game i don't think that's unfair at all um and and i think that rick giving an extra vote to aubrey sure why not like I, i'm fine with that that's that's fine with me i don't i i think i i had a I don't, I didn't have a problem, but I, I'm trying to like find where my, I need to find some consistency with like how I feel about Twist because I don't, like if Aubrey stayed home, like, if, excuse me, if Aubrey stayed in the game because of that advantage that Rick gave her, that I, that, then she was saved from someone who was voted out of the game. And I get that they're still in the game, but then like they're in purgatory, but no one else knows that they're there. I just feel like people who aren't technically in the game or, or maybe they are, I guess that's like the philosophical difference shouldn't be affecting the people who are currently in the game until it's, they're aware that they're there. I think that's my biggest problem. With mm-hmm. it. And I, li- I like sense. Rick and I like Aubrey. So this has nothing to do. This isn't like the Cochran on the boat thing where everyone hated it. Cause it was Cochran. Like I'm trying to have a little bit of consistency with that. Um, I'm, I'm a little more okay with this double tribal. I remember during game changes when we talked about it, you made the point that Malcolm or who went home, Malcolm's tribe didn't vote him out. And mm-hmm. so that is like where that, like, I guess, quote unquote, ethically is like difficult. Yep. Um, this time Wendy's tribe did vote her out. Um, I think people are probably more okay with it because it's Wendy, if I'm going to be really honest, mm-hmm. but I, I still don't know how I, I still don't love this i love the drama i love what i just watched but you're right it's a very short-sighted yes and that's it in a nutshell i mean i said back then that look the whole point of tv is you're supposed to feel some sort of emotion when you're watching it believe it or not (laughs) you're not supposed to just passively watch tv and be on your phone or doing something tv bot like you're supposed to be emotional and then what's and then sort of a mo come at the end. And when Malcolm got voted out, I was sick to my stomach just like Malcolm was. And it sucked. It was great TV though. It just sucked in the long run because then we lost we lost Sandra and we had the whole Varner Zeke incident. And then we had uh nobody from that tribe survived. JT goes and it was just a mess. But with with this the way that this worked out, I don't think in the long run it's going to work out as poorly as it did on that season because it happened right before the merge. Was it, it wasn't as good of an – that part tonight wasn't as good as it was when Malcolm went home mm-hmm. despite the fact that it was Malcolm went home that time and Wendy this time. But I like that despite something like that ruining a fan favorite's third chance to win the game, Survivor still has the balls to bring it back with the possibility of it screwing over another fan favorite's third time to win the game. So at least they're being consistent in who, in who they're willing to risk. Like they're willing to try out things more than once if they think there's potential there. And I think tonight we saw like there's potential. I mean, we had seven people, we had four and three, they had never met each other. And then Wendy was the only one binding them together. And that's who they voted out because the four were able to use that against the three to get rid of Wendy. It's, it's pretty incredible. Yeah. That's a good point um, about survivor, like having the balls to do it again, because if Kelly or David went home in this fashion, I can assure you people would not be as okay with it as they were with Wendy going home. Mm -hmm. So I think that like, that's a good point that survivor lost like Malcolm of all people with this, but they're willing to do that again. Um, Quick shift. This goes back to the Aubrey extra vote. Um, what is the rule? So Aubrey's voted out that she ha- has a physical idol and she has that uh, extra vote, which goes to the final seven, I believe she said. Mm-hmm. Are those deactivated? No, she's still in the game. So if she comes back in, she's got those. She's got an idol and she's got that. I mean, she's she's never been out of Survivor. So until she's mm. out of the game, those advantages are still valuable to her interesting yeah that's going to be interesting and that would be something that if she gets back in the game that could be really controversial because then it's she was voted out with an idol and with an advantage and she's getting a second chance to play that advantage and play that idol that's kind of wild that is kind of wild i think you know jeff does those like weekly interviews with dalton ross i feel like he brought this up in one of them and i clearly didn't read it because i don't know um, oh, so maybe it is. Yeah, then maybe I'm wrong. But that's what I'm, yeah. that's at least my thinking. I, th- I think you're right. Um, someone who does more research than us, leave us a comment because I, I, 
I feel like that's something that is going to be a gigantic factor. And I think Aubrey has a really good chance of getting back in. Um, Cause Chris is going to have some form of disadvantage. All we know is he has to, un- he's going to have to untie knots at some point. And the practice thing was just like what three bamboo poles. Yeah. I know what it's going to be. It's going to be the thing where you're in the cage and you have to get out from behind the cage. It's exactly what Francesca and Fabio or and not Fabio. Oh my God. Oh, Francesca yeah. and Matt Elrod did as their first challenge. And it's exactly what the outcasts had to do to get back into the game. That's what we're going to see. Yeah. And if you want to get out, you open that door and you walk through and that's how you get back into the game. Yeah, it is going to be that one. That one's a good, that's a good like visual one to watch because you just see how like weak those sticks are. Um, mm-hmm. Like to pick up that key or whatever. Um, good call. Yeah, I was trying and, to and, and, out. And, and really, like, so anybody who's concerned going into next week um, about Chris, I still think Chris probably ends up pulling this out. Either Chris or Aubrey is going to win this because he has to untie more knots probably to get his bundle of sticks unrolled. But mm-hmm. are untied. But once that's done, that's the only part of that challenge that's going to hurt him. After that, he's mm-hmm. tying his stuff together. So I think that I think that it just makes it so that he has like a little bit of a delay while everybody else is already building their pole to get out. Yeah, because even if your pole, it's not that much of a disadvantage, like you said. Assuming that this is even what happens. Um, if what was I saying? So like, if if I'm like nine tenths of the way there and you're two tenths of the way there, mine could still be weak. Like I still have, mm-hmm. you still have to make sure it's tied appropriately. Um, so it's not, it's not like the biggest disadvantage. Um, but what do we think? We, I, you and I were kind of going back and forth last week about like, oh, um, like Chris should be playing individually, but how should he know that? Because, and I was saying like, they should be more tribe oriented because they don't have any other reason mm-hmm. to believe they're not. Now it's pretty clear that they are not a tribe and mm-hmm. Keith goes off on his own. And this is like the, the amazing social politics of Survivor. Keith goes off on his own and everyone is like, screw this kid. Chris like yeah. decks him to the ground, Reem's screaming at him the whole time. What do you think about this, this Keith stuff? Keith, I feel like I love it. had a big episode. Here's, here's what I'll say. There's a reason why Reem and Keith were the first two people voted out of Survivor. Yeah, who, who was the one who said that? Was it Someone was like, this is why we voted him out. I think it was Devins who said yeah. that because Devins is trying to like be like, hey, Chris, we didn't vote you out for the same reason we voted them out. But as I'm sitting there watching, I'm going, you know, even later on when Reem is yelling at Chris because Chris said that she let Keith pick up the thing. And Chris is just like, all right, whatever you want. Like he's just sitting there taking it. There's a reason like Reem would not have lasted long in this game. I don't think anyway. Yeah. You know, I don't think that she was ever going to last a long time. She's great TV. I love watching Reem, but she was never going to last a long time. And Mm. Keith, I mean, look, good for Keith for going out on his own because you know what? You don't know if it's an individual game or if it's a team game. And Mm -hmm. he was right. It was an individual game. It's funny that when he goes off on his own, he doesn't get the advantage. And then he gets the advantage because he just listens to Reem, picks it up, and that's the one that's actually more beneficial to him. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, it worked out really well for Keith. Um, And I I feel like if Keith gets back in, he's not going to like think – no one can really stand him on Extinction Island and he doesn't have any like allies who are currently in the game. So if he gets back in, he's going to have a tough road ahead as is pretty much everybody except for Aubrey. If her two things no, I'll work, t- I'll tell you what though, if Devin's or, oh, yeah, Chris, fine. Devin's or Chris get back in the game, the, the thing with the two of them is Lesu has four. Lesu also just voted with Eric, Gavin, and Victoria. And don't, <laughs> don't, oh, bless you. Oh, gosh, don't put you. it past, don't put it past Wendy, or I'm sorry, Wentworth and David to pitch to them, hey, look, we did that because we wanted to be able to work with you in the future. Oh, and, absolutely. And, and don't put it past them to make that argument. And if they're all really concerned that Joey Amazing, who is literally a cheat code, it's so obnoxious. Why oh is gosh. he so good? I want to punch. Lauren was like, I hate him. Or like, yeah, I want to. I, I want to hey, punch him. I can't see you, by the way. I can hear you great, but I can't see you. You can't see me. I wonder why. Um, I want to punch Joey Amazing in the face, but I would break my hand. I just want to say that. But there you is can't... the quote of the night. So you can't see me at all. No, I can't. But I can hear you perfectly. Well, I'm going to leave and come back. We'll see what okay. happens. So I'm have gonna, a conversation. I, with all right. So. I'm going to talk to myself here. Whoa, what happened? Uh-oh. 
Oh no, this is hilarious. So Alexa's gone. Can anybody hear me? Okay, good. Well, anyway, hopefully Alexa ends up coming back in. I don't know what ended up happening. I just X'd out and came back. So we'll see how this goes. This is a first. Um, as Survivor ends up talking about Survivor firsts, this is a first. Alexa's back. Alexa, so supposedly everybody could see me, not you. Or no, supposedly people could see me, so it was only you. And then when I X'd out, what it ended. It ended, but it never ended. It's still live. We're still live. Oh, thank God. Because you left. And then, because I couldn't see you, and then I realized that I'm on my personal account and you're on the Survivor Specials account. So I didn't know if I was talking to myself or I was just saying, oh shit, live for like 30 seconds. But we are back. Everything is fine. Or I think we're not. fine. We'll, we'll see. I think yeah, I'm watching I'm watching the video right now. <laughs> and and it looks like we just leave and then we just come back. So this will be hilarious. Oh. Yeah, it's literally just the little blue guy that says Google <laughs> at like the 20-something minute mark. And then it um, it comes in. But anyway, moving, moving on. on past that, Joe like is that a never happened. Code. He is unreal. He gets some some personal content tonight. He got he got some crying in. Uh, Sierra Don Thomas gets a reference. Um, yeah, I, I, that's not a prop bet, but we might have to replace the hashtag with previous. Didn't we used to have like a previous player gets yeah, mentioned or like Sierra's mom gets mentioned or something? Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, Joe is just absolutely crushing it and he's he he finally says like you know i was trying to hide but there's just like no way that i can even do that um i think we're gonna get some foreshadowing to julie um julie playing him pretty hard because she has now said multiple times like i'm just grooming him i'm just grooming him um they're all pretty aware of what they need to do i like his approach of i'm just going to sell all of us as threats and not just me i actually i think that's a good idea um, cause that Kama tribe has not yet lost. None of those five have gone to tribal council yet. And they're not going to go, they're going to be the Chris Nobles and the Jessica Johnsons of the <laughs> merge. All five of them. Hi. I lost you for a second, but I heard you say the Chris Nobles thing. Also, my roommate's Alexa is going off right now and it's really oh, freaking gosh. me out because it's in <laughs> his room and he's not home. So it's really freaking me out that it's playing. Oh God. She's listening. Okay. Keep talking. One sec. Yeah. Keep okay, talking. I'm going to keep talking. So for this Alexa, merge, stop. instead of just one Chris Nobler, one Jessica Johnson who's never been to tribal council, we're going to have five people who have not yet been to tribal council. And Alexa, shut up. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm See, seriously done. Me. I'm <laughs> done with your name. Your name is the word. This is yeah, a try, disaster. Try being, the, try being the one with the name. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm going to tell you what. This whole entire episode was absolutely epic and we have butchered this we are failing. 17 ways tonight but i do agree with you kama's now in for a rude awakening and you know who's not joe because he's been to tribal council before yeah, also because aubrey went home joe is probably going to look to kelly and david and say hey you guys don't want to get rid of me right like come on like the returnees need to stick together and all of a sudden you could have joe wentworth david war dog and um, Lauren, you have five people with two idols because we didn't mention, but Bing, Kelly Bing. Moore found an idol tonight. Cl uh, oh my God, Carl is is nowhere. He he's not going anywhere. That Bing is living forever. Um, and yeah, poor Kelly. She makes a great Cleveland Browns reference last week that can't really be as appreciated as usual. And then she has this great Bing moment that's not even hers because Carl did it the season before. So Carl did it. yeah, so Carl beat Kelly to the punch, but. That was crazy. I mean, having that, I, I don't remember if it was like exactly behind War Dog, but like having that patience to be like, I can't react. I'm going to just like let him walk away. She yanks it, tells Lauren, and then Lauren just subtly is like, I got one too. She and yeah. Kelly have their quick little meltdown and they are looking real good right now. And Lauren gets her merge feast. Yeah, Lauren's getting a merge feast, so Lauren won't black out while she's walking down the beach. Oh my gosh, she looks she looks hilarious. Tough. I'm so I'm sorry. It's just it's funny to hear like those like just yeah. I was walking down the beach and I blacked out. It's just like oh yeah, like, I hate same when that though. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah, Miami was cool, but I just I just like <laughs> I just like look at this and I'm like, all right. So we have Lauren and Kelly with an idol each. And I love the moment of Kel like Kellen was right. Whisper, whisper. 
Yeah, yeah, and Wardog might be getting a little bit of a dodo edit because he walks oh, by, yeah. climbing up in the tree. Wentworth is down there. She goes, I found it. Lauren goes, I have one too, which is exactly what we were hoping would happen. I think we said this with Carl, that it would be on the beach the way the Davids came together. And you say, I have one too. And it's, oh my God, I love you. And Kelly's face in the moment was like, we're not as, as screwed as I originally thought. Like we <laughs> have a freaking chance. Um, so I'm loving it. And you know what? Like, Good for Kelly, good for Lauren. I mean, they've had a fight this entire time. And I just keep thinking, like, the last four people from Manu left in the game are two returnees, Lauren and Wardog. Like, I would not have expected that. Like, I, there is no way Kelly Wentworth and David Wright should have survived five tribal councils. Is that how many they went to? They went to every tribal council except for one. And Kelly Wentworth and David Wright are still in this game. Yeah, preseason, who thought Aubrey was going to be the first one out? Yeah. Certainly not us. Even during the season, I had Aubrey number one in my power rankings. And Alexa, yeah. I hate to tell you, but so did you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, someone left a comment, which I, I, I've been meaning to adopt, but I've been too lazy to. Someone was like, I'm, I'm getting a little sick of Phil and Alexa just putting all the people with idols and advantages up top. And that's a good point because Aubrey, walked, Aubrey went home with two big time advantages today. Yeah, but I never thought that Aubrey would be the one to mess it up. And also like, I am going to, guess what? Lauren and Kelly Wentworth are my one, two next week. So if you're, top. <laughs> if you're listening right now to this recap, Mr. Or Mrs. Whoever is angry with us for doing that. Kelly Wentworth is my number one. And Lauren is my number two in my power rank. Cause they have idols. And right now, that's the safest thing to do at Emerge, especially when we don't know the impact that the person returning to the game is going to have on the game. Yeah, I'm, I'm super curious to see. Gosh, and now, now that we're talking it out, now that I'm talking out loud, I feel like next week should have been the double episode because it's going, they're going to have to fit quite a bit in. They're going to have to fit in well, them finding out that this Extinction Island exists, the actual challenge, that person getting back in, an immunity challenge and like the inevitable scramble of the first vote of the merge. This and isn't probably survivors. a lot of idols. This isn't survivor's choice though. I mean, this is, this is no, the, it's, um, not. it's the week. It's the week of March madness. And it used to be where survivor wasn't even on the week of March madness. Cause he used to be on yeah. Thursdays. And now what they do is like one show ended the world's best ended. And now there's the week off where survivor gets two hours before the LeBron James show. The longest Tintiba. mile. The, the mi million dollar mile. Million um, dollar. Yeah. Did we so, see an ad for that every we single? Did. Yeah. 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 So that's why that's why this was the two hour. This has not. I mean, I'm sure Jeff would have much rather next week been the yeah. two hour. But oh yeah. Oh, I absolutely. I, oh, I, I certainly know that. It just like timing wise, it's like oh, that makes a lot of sense now. But and ne I just want to bring ahead. up one more thing while we're talking about Joe. I forgot that he also has Aurora. So would it actually be? Oh yeah, Aurora's gonna be with him. So what are there? There's eleven. No, there's twelve people left in the game. You have your four Lesu, Joe, and Aurora, possibly, which would make it six versus six. And then you have a person coming in. So there's going to be 13 people at this merge. There's going to be 13 people at this merge. Hey, it could be could be a seven, six vote at this, which could be crazy. Yeah, you wonder if that, it, it's almost too easy, but I feel like that person coming in is either going to be a unanimous re-vote back out or some form of swing vote. I think they might be immune. I think that they might adopt. You think they're going to do that? Island. Yeah, I remember yeah. you mentioned that. I think they're going to do that because they want the person who gets back in to get back in for a reason. Like, if you're doing Edge of Extinction, you want to give them at least a day to get mm -hmm. everything back under them. Otherwise, it was kind of a waste of time. Redemption Island was different, I feel, because Redemption Island, you're, you're there and you have to beat somebody every week. But with Extinction Island, you're literally just sitting there. So what's the point of having somebody come back in and then immediately be voted out? We just watch these people on that beach for no reason then. Yeah, exactly. And we've been getting a lot of content because I mean, obviously, this is the like, this is the entire theme of the season, but there's been a lot of attention on them. They're not just going to let this person get voted out immediately. Yeah. So they, they might do that. Um, what else? Well, uh, another thing, I guess, is um, I just completely lost it. I did want to say oh. extra vote good until final seven. I didn't know how I felt about that. Just going back to that real quick. Um, yeah, I thought that would. I thought that was going to be another for this vote only. Yeah, and I would have been okay with that. But I guess yeah, they want to make Aubrey think about it and not just be able to use it whenever she wants. Although it wouldn't have made a difference now anyway because she got voted off. Uh, yeah, she got one. unanimously. Um, I guess quick, quick jump back to Aurora because I mean she's the one who got the least amount of content tonight. But she uh, clearly she and Joe are really tight. Like if that if this fan fiction alliance happens, she's going to be in that. But she's like you see her actively helping Aubrey in that um 
first immunity challenge. And that's a puzzle that, that you could do that in 30 seconds or you could spend hours doing it. This is four buoys. Um, and kind of going, going into the puzzles overall, I remember like preseason, David was saying like his girlfriend made him this like Bible of every single puzzle. And you see him just flying through that second slide puzzle. And like mm-hmm. you see it forming and then Joe and Julia just pull it out of nowhere. Yeah. And, and also back to that, we haven't said this, how amazing was that first challenge in terms of the drama? They were losing oh, by yeah. so much. And, and I always hate when it just comes down to the puzzle. But the thing with that puzzle is if Christian Hubicki was on this season, he would have solved that puzzle in 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. And these that that Manu tribe had – they had to have been up there for a half hour. It had to have been. It might have even been longer. So for them to not get it and then also for Kama to win and then try to tell Manu how to do it so that Lesu would lose again, I was like, all right, I'm getting tired of this now. Now this is getting old. So I was really pumped that Lesu managed to pull it out and that even with Kama helping them, Manu just couldn't figure it out. But I I know that the War Dog is a fan of this podcast and a lot of people are trying to figure out, like, what's the War Dog's strength and what are his weaknesses? The man's got a cannon. I mean, that guy can just flat out throw a, a bean bag at a at – a, oh, he can't? Oh, never mind. Okay, never mind. No, okay. <laughs> I was like, am I, am I, am I like, completely well, missing something? I think – We War love Dog, you, War Dog. But yeah. But, you got well, some, yeah. I think what he was trying to do is he was trying to just throw it underneath those, and he thought that the wind would just blow it so that it would spin. I mean, that was Obviously. so bad. That was yeah, so that bad. Was you, and Jeff would – we had a classic Jeff. He was like – yeah, you can tell who's thrown a baseball and who hasn't. And you have Joey throwing this like gorgeous toss and War Dog just like flunks it to the ground. Oh my um, God. It yeah. was brutal. And yeah, he can't he- swim. Like they couldn't swim either. That tribe, I don't know how those are the last four people left. <laughs> no, but like looking at them, you're like, oh yeah, this is like the athletic, like Dave is good at puzzles. Like Kelly is like a tank. War Dog is a tank. Lauren is a college athlete. Like how is this not working? But that first, um, that first challenge Eric and Aurora have these gorgeous dives. Like they, and they have the like great camera movement. Like they get them underwater and Kelly just like jumps, like just like feet first in. And then I don't, so what was I, I must've been missing something. Were you, did you need to pull something or like turn yeah, that a, lever they underwater? They had to pull something. Uh-oh. I if you lost me. But you had to, they had to pull something out from underneath the buoys. And when you pulled from underneath, it was like, it was like a lock. So like, I guess like the, the part of it like connected and that was holding it together. So when you pulled it out, the two parts separated and the thing uh-huh. floated up, but they couldn't pull it out from no, the life all of them. Four and it wasn't it. them who had trouble. It wasn't just that tribe who mm-hmm. had trouble though. The other tribes weren't doing great at it either. It was just that it was most noticeable on Lesu because literally like they couldn't hold their breath for more than five seconds either to get Yeah, it. and I guess I think they all tried it or I don't, I don't remember if David tried it, but Lauren gets like the hero music once she actually gets it. Um, and then David and Kelly, again, the two puzzle people. And I guess like th- those two are just the ones who would be best at puzzles. And David, like you see it forming and he is like getting himself so pumped up and then they just lose it at the well, that was last oh no now i'm mixing it up now yeah that was two different um challenges. yeah that was oh yeah that was when aurora was helping aubrey see i can't even keep track of all their losses and i will be i will be <laughs> honest with you though in the second challenge in the second immunity challenge not reward but in the second immunity challenge when they said only one tribe wins i was like well this is boring because we know that joe's tribe won so the other yeah. two tribes and i was what really made me a little sick to my stomach is i was like damn we're gonna lose two we're gonna lose three people in a night that's crazy that's what i thought so yeah. did jeff not tell them until that's what I thought. Okay. I was like, crap, I missed that. But all yeah. right, I'm not crazy. Um, he didn't tell until after it was over, which was great because that was, I was like, oh, okay, good. We're only losing two people. Cause that would have sucked. Cause then you would have lost Wendy and David or Kelly or Lauren or war dog. And you mm-hmm. want, you want at least four of those people hitting this merge. Yeah. Um, and actually now we're now I'm going back to that double, that double tribal. If Victoria goes on to win, Kelly Wentworth had, it was Kelly's idea to, get Victoria out in that. And that was just like glossed over immediately. She was like, they're never going to think we're going for her. So that, I mean, that would have, I mean, obviously it worked out because they ended up getting rid of Wendy. It worked out for her, but man, that I was like, Oh, this is it. The problem too is though, if you go for Victoria in this situation, 
then there's a better chance you go to rocks. I mean, Kelly even, yeah. even ended up saying War Dog is exactly right, which bothers her, but yeah. he was exactly right. And and mm -hmm. for I love how they just talk about him going and crunching numbers off on his own. I and think you see his eyes like <laughs> Yeah, I think War Dog's like an insanely intelligent guy that oh, he yeah. comes he comes off like because he's got that accent and all that. He just doesn't seem as smart as he is. But I think War Dog is incredibly intelligent. And so far, every move he's made in this game has been the right move. And going for Wendy was 100% the right move. Because if you go Victoria, you might draw rocks. Also, if you do draw rocks, Victoria is now safe. So you didn't even get rid of her, you know? Yeah, and she was the one who was going to break anyway, and obviously she's not going to vote for herself. Yeah. Um, someone, I'm now jumping everywhere. Someone literally just tweeted at us the, so Aubrey's idol rules. She go, it goes, congratulations, you have found a hidden immunity idol. When played at tribal council, any of us cats can you, yada, yada. Um, if you intend to play the idol for yourself or someone else, you must do so before the votes are read. If you do not use the idol and are voted out, the idol no longer oh, has yeah. any power in the game. Wow. The last time you can use idols when there are five players remaining left in the game. So that, thank you, good fellow. One, out, two, yeah. three, one, two, five, three, eight. Thank you for that. Um, I wonder, and I, I guess, do we assume that that also um, applies to her extra vote? I guess. I would guess. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. So I guess, oh, I guess she wouldn't even know that Rick is the one who gave it to her. Unless Rick mentioned it, but I, it probably doesn't matter because the chances of both Rick and Aubrey playing in the game Again, are, zero, are much. basically zero yeah. percent. And I bet he did tell her. And I bet like when, yeah, because like uh, they, we didn't get a reaction when Aubrey got there. We just got Aubrey's reaction. I would have liked to hear mm -hmm. Rick be like, "Wait, we gave you an extra vote. What the hell? <laughs> what the hell, Aubrey?" Yeah, because they must have told her. I don't think that there's any way they didn't. No, no, yeah, definitely not. Um, what else? We get the sad violin as soon as Aubrey gets her second vote. Um, big Chris Noble episode. This was my I want my pastries. Uh, challenge because mm -hmm. they won both they both won the pastries and it was the exact same challenge uh war dog cannot throw i thought comma was in trouble julie said direct quote it's hard to imagine us losing at this point so i was like oh my god they're gonna lose and joe they're gonna vote joe out but that didn't happen yep uh, um what ron looked like he was he, ron was on a little sketchy terms or something i mean ron you know victoria see here's here's the problem and and now I'm going to get so much crap for just like hopping on this Victoria bandwagon. I really don't care because I'm all in, but she clearly is going to have a big role in this game where mm -hmm. at some point she's going to be a swing vote that ends up screwing over her comma people because mm -hmm. she has hinted at it way too much that she would be like somebody who would flip that she's considering it. And you know, she has talked in the past about getting rid of Joe. She hasn't really seen eye to eye with Julie because when we got that conversation about them with the idols, it didn't seem like they were best friends. And mm -hmm. I just think something's going to end up happening where she's she's going to be a huge impact. Even if she doesn't win, she's going to have a huge impact on somebody else that we're rooting for right now or that looks like they have a great chance losing and going home. Yeah, because those – I mean, we, when Aubrey was voted out, we really only got Joe's reaction. But Joe was like – Okay, well, comma strong clearly isn't a thing, and that that vote speaks to all five of those comma people. Like, even though they all wanted Aubrey gone, that's still saying, "Oh crap, we voted at one of our own. This game is on now." Yeah, um, yeah, and, and I wanted to, um, while we're talking about you know who's been voted off and everything. Um, so in this challenge, so I won't be here Wednesday. Alex is going to be doing it with who? who uh, Mister Intern Robert. Okay, you're doing it with intern. Okay, so I won't be here on Wednesday, which really sucks because it's the it's I know the missing a big one. I really wanted to do it, and intern's not going to do nearly as well as I would, which is a bummer. But I have faith in intern, you know, because because intern he can talk about Rick Devins and either him getting back into the game or not getting back into the game. <laughs> We're just going to talk about Rick for like an hour. <laughs> we'll either get the elation or the heartbreak from uh, from intern. But um, while we're what were we, while we're talking about this. I wanted to say that Alexa and I both have our complete fantasy teams going into the merge. <laughs> while Vaughn, I'm glad you brought this up. While Vaughn, the King Vaughn, Mr. $20 patron named after Vaughn because he's so good at everything, has one person left. He has as many people left as Carl. He only has Gavin. That's all he's got. And you know what? They could have gotten rid of Gavin tonight. It's absolutely crazy that Vaughn has one person left in this game. This um, is sorry, unreal. But, but you need to take you. We need to give it to you because you've been 
beaten the crap out of us for long enough. Yeah, th this I'm looking at it. It's it's insane. Carl's got Victoria, and Vaughn's got he, Gavin, and Gavin's not. I don't think Gavin's going anywhere. But, but he's also, not going but yeah, oh, no, I don't think he's going anywhere. As in, he's not going home. Oh no, I think he's going far. That's a, I, oh gosh, that could have said I mean. Sorry, Gavin, if you're listening. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, you and I are like we're looking good. I've never I've never seen the fantasy game laid out like this before. It's pretty much like we had two phantom tribes, and and the thing is, so I you know I was texting um who was I texting? I was texting Will, and 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 it was funny because he texted me, and I was texting him about Victoria, and I was just like, oh my god, I love this girl, and he was like, yeah, I couldn't believe none of you picked her because like her preseason stuff was good, and and it's funny because. I was like, well, look at my team. Where was I going to fit Victoria in? It's it's Vaughn who dropped the ball here. I mean, I picked Wardog, David, Lauren, and Wentworth. Manu lost every challenge except for one, and those are the four people that are remaining from the original nine that was Manu. And then also, I had to take Ron. I mean, I couldn't believe that Ron was still there. I mean, Vaughn took Keith over victoria i mean it just it just doesn't get much worse than that i'm sorry it just doesn't yeah i should have invited vaughn on that actually would have been if had i known that um aubrey was gonna go home tonight i should have invited vaughn just so that um next wednesday i can just rip on him for only having one person left oh my god um, and especially when gavin goes home next week after uh <laughs> who's it gonna be reem gonna win her way back into the game and then gavin's gonna go home and Vaughn's gonna <laughs> have nobody and carl's gonna have two people um yeah, yeah, that's that's exactly what's gonna happen. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is always why I hate the preseason because every single take that I've had on all these people is pretty much completely off. So good, good on Team Carl. I mean, Team Carl's crushing it. He he got had Rick going home last week. He's got Victoria this week. Um, he's got he's got Victoria for a while probably. Mm. Um, he's got Victoria. He gets 10, 20 points from Victoria winning. Or how many do we have? Who, how many do we give to the winner? Seven. So he's got fourteen seven. points coming from Victoria at the end of the yeah. game. So Carl might win this. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. Lots of chickens and confessionals. I guess we netted out Dude, there. Aren't going to get any chickens killed. The chicken literally walked past Aubrey. How? And the camera like went in and out. That was unreal. And someone Aubrey, like, someone tweeted. Yeah, someone tweeted that they're planting the chickens, which like would be awesome if they were. But unless they merge on that beach, those chicken, those chickens are wild chickens. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Going on exactly. to live their best best lives, I guess. I, I would, you know, now what's going to happen is the merge feast is literally just going to be those three chickens, <laughs> and that's it. All they're going to get, and poor Lauren's literally just going to fucking or just <laughs> whittle away. Whatever. <laughs> we're not on to the uh, the Patreon podcast. Yeah, yet. we're not there yet, but we. I mean, we dropped way worse f bombs before yeah um what else a compilation of comma tribe hi um i'm just looking at the remaining notes i have compilation of comma tribe sucking at providing i forget who it was who said this i think it was Ram, where he was like we don't know what to do and julie is just holding the fishing net, staring at the beach like not doing anything with it so they make a good point like Getting rid of Joe, well, I guess now it's a completely different story, but getting rid of Joe in the pre-merge, I can see why they didn't want to do it. They had a ton yeah. of food. They never went to tribal council. I, I don't blame them. And honestly, Joe's like a pretty cool guy. Like Joe's yeah, he's a cool dude to hang out with. Yeah, you don't want to get rid of Joe. Like, I don't know. And and now he's going to hit the merge. And once again, though, he hasn't been he hasn't been eligible to be voted out of the game yet. He's going to hit the merge. And the thing is, these challenges – he's not going to win all the puzzles and stuff. So I'm not worried about it. Like, I'm really not. I mean, and we've seen him lose to Keith in an endurance challenge. He passed out. Like, yes, even King Joe's body can fail him. And mm -hmm. so I, you know, there's always been a time in every season where Joe's been eligible to be voted out. And it's going to happen again this season. So I'm not, yeah. I mean, not that worried about it either. And even if he does get to the end, I feel like this is a group that's here to play. And these guys are really here to play strategically. And I think if Joe's there, Unless his game changes, I think they're not going to see him the same way that he would be seen in other seasons had he made it to the end. The other um, problem here is, too, people might actually need Joe's vote in order to get rid of the opposition. So you might have to keep him. Yeah. Might and also, like, like you mentioned earlier, Kelly and Joe have a history together. Mm -hmm. I think Kelly's probably going to be pretty excited to have Joe back with her because that's just one more person who is a threat but also kind of isn't. It, it's, his placement is odd. Um I guess, um, I mean, that's kind of the main everything that I have. I've, we have a lot of props. The biggest one is Wendy hugging Jeff. Viewed Wendy <laughs> hugging Jeff, like, 
We don't get these very often. We're super pumped about it. David had the episode title. I was waiting for that to pop up. It's like the worst cocktail party ever. Mm -hmm. Aubrey definitely had 10 confessionals. I have an exact, I have like 11 written down, which is probably a little off, but if, I don't know if anybody we'll else had We'll look it up after. We'll, we'll look, look it up. up. It. Um, Remember, it's on the idol. Ron sat out. Aurora sat out. Julie um, hit her third sit out, so that's done. Julie hit her third sit out. Aubrey sat out, which I guess doesn't really matter anymore. And Julia sat out. So a lot of people sat out. Um, all of Kama and all of Manu got two rewards. They got to no, enjoy two. Well, yeah. So the way I'm the way I'm able to keep track of this is all of original Mana plus Wendy got two rewards, except Aubrey Kama. only got one. Yeah, all of original Kama got, okay. got do you, two rewards. You, do you have the Google Doc open? Do you want to write that down? I do. Don't. Yeah, I will because it's easier. So all comma have four rewards. Yeah. Oh, and Vo Victoria sat Aubrey. out also. Except Aubrey. Yeah, I have I have the sit outs written down. Yeah, so we I'll got put a that lot in. of sit outs. And um, Kelly went with found an idol. So we had a lot of things happen tonight. Yeah, we had a lot. And um, next week we're gonna have somebody come back from Extinction Island. So that's gonna be yeah. another one, and we'll probably have an individual immunity. And maybe if some of these people start leaving, we'll start having some. Uh, We'll, we'll start having some, uh, uh, what do you call it, boot list points? Boot list. <laughs> yeah, I forgot what that was. And we'll have we'll have who had 10 or more votes, who had less than five. And this is going to be good. I mean, look, and, and confessionals in every episode, which is coming, because Keith and Reem are still alive for that. Um, Reem so did, Reem so did speak. Wendy. Yeah, well, and Reem spoke tonight yeah. for sure. Oh, um, what about people who have – did Chris last more than five days on Extinction Island? Yeah, he, he's, he's over five because uh, Chris five. got there on day – let me see. I have it. I have it right here. Chris got there on day eight, and now it's day fifth. It was day sixteen, so he's over five, and Rick is over five. Wow, that happened fast. Yeah, so that's that's the beauty. If you make it two episodes, you're pretty much there. So Rick and Rick and Chris, Chris are both are both at over five days wow. on extinction. So maybe we should have done like ten days on extinction, but whatever. Whatever. Um, We're onward and upward. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so yeah, we to Phil, like Phil just said, we have not updated the boot list yet, which I know is controversial, but that's what we rolled with. Um, so this weekend, now that we're going into the merge, I'll update the props um, and I'll post where we are with the prop bet standings because that one actually has had some movement where we just can't post boot list standings because right now everybody is tied, all like 250 of us who are doing boot lists. Yeah. Um, so yeah, what, what else, Phil? What are we missing? Uh, MVP, who do you got? Oh my god! I've literally I have a lot of people. I, let me go back. Um, I don't know. I don't. I think G so. I wanted to give Vaughn a little bit of crap for only having one person left, but Gavin is sneaky, super athletic. That's one thing I wanted to bring up. He is like hanging with Joe in every single challenge, and he is not. I mean, he hasn't really gone to many tribal councils, but he's not coming off as a threat. I think Gavin is a dark horse. Um, I think Gavin's playing really well. I think Victoria could be a very easy MVP. I think. Julia Carter spoke tonight twice. Let's throw her an MVP. I think yeah. Eric had a really, really good episode. We see him, like he approached David and Wardog. I thought that was really good for him. I think Wardog had a weird episode. Um, not really great, but in the end, he came up with the Wendy idea. So that's going to go well for him. Kelly found an idol. David very well could have gone home. And he is, he, he wanted to sink the SS Wentworth. And now he and Kelly Wentworth are like, super tight yeah. so david's adapting really well i think a lot of people i think julie's got herself set up really well i think like half of this cast who's still remaining could but, could be the mvp but the mvp of tonight's episode is victoria it's it's just That's, i mean she's she's not even on my team she's on carl's team team like, carl she's on team carl and i wish i could make a better argument for somebody on my team but Tonight, she was shown as making the move on Aubrey. She was fantastic in her acting ability to convince Aubrey. You convince a three-time great strategic player to not play an idol, to make them feel that safe. You, She thinks that you're her black cat to the witch. Oh, the Halloween party was awesome. We didn't yeah. even talk about that. Jeff was and, like, how did you think of that? Yeah, and and if that happens, I mean, I think Victoria's just a hands-down MVP. So that's just, that's just where I stand on that. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I think everybody's – What's crazy about this season is I think the edit has been pretty even across the board that I could see anybody winning and anybody losing. You know what I mean? Like, and I, yeah. obviously there's people who've gotten less confessionals and I'm sure, you know, whatever, but I'm just saying like, we've been told that either side could come out on top of this. 
And the side that only has four people at the moment could easily have seven after next week. Yeah, I think a lot of people could still win. And I really like that. And is it? And like you said, not even really edit wise. Like there are a lot of people playing good games. There are a lot of people who are still just starting to play the game. And there were how many days in? We're 16 days in. So there's still a ton left to play. And I think this, I'm curious to see how we're all going to look back on this pre merge because we, tonight, I'm, I'm actually glad we got a two hour episode tonight because I finally somewhat got to know a little bit more about these comma players. So, that, that worked out going into the merge. Um, predictions are going to be a shit show, excuse my language, for this merge, as they were for this week. Should we say who our predictions guest is? Yes. We're pretty excited about it. We're this. pretty excited about it. And last time, tragedy struck. And this time, as soon as we do this, there's like another thing that comes up. And it's crazy. But yes. he's, he's, he's going to... He says he's going to push through, and we're going to have John Carroll on. Um, we were, we tried to have him on a couple seasons ago, and he had – I forget exactly what it was, but he had something come up. That was a tragedy, and now this time he had another thing come up because there was, like, flooding in Nebraska that hit his farm, which is crazy that every time we plan one of these things, that happens. Um, so hopefully that we're not, like, a bad luck thing for John Carroll. Yeah, I feel, feel a little bad. But yeah, but, we had nothing to do with this. Yeah, but so we're going to have John Carroll on this week. And and then it starts to after John Carroll we have we got a squad yeah we have a squad we just have a bunch of right now we have we have three first timers in hold a on row. don't say it yet don't don't say who they are yeah. let's not spoil it I'm not gonna say who they are but we have three first timers in a row and then we're trying to figure out what we're gonna do after that but we have three in a row um so it should be fun um but yeah so John Carroll on Sunday intern and alexa on wednesday unfortunately all of you who tune tune in solely for me you should still tune in to listen to alexa and intern they're both very smart about survivor i know that it's not the same because i'm just me but go ahead alexa shoot me down now stop no that no that was nice you did i'll take that oh. um so we will like phil said we are super excited for john carroll we've been wanting to have him on for a really long time i believe he's been wanting to join us for a really mm -hmm. long time but that's maybe just us tooting our own horns um, so we will be live with John Carroll, this, who might be the earliest player we have ever spoken to on this podcast. It will be. We've never correct, had a one, two, take. three. Never had a Yeah. Three. So yeah, see, yeah. So this is going to be super exciting. We'll be live with John Carroll this Sunday at 6 p.m. Pacific time, 9 p.m. Eastern. Um, as Phil said, um, John Carroll's, I believe his, his family ranch in Nebraska has been flooded. And I, I think he's, he, we saw on Twitter he lost some goats. I think there's a lot of issues going on there. So we're going to retweet um, what he posted. I think he's there's obviously like you know no obligation, but we just want to get the word out there. I think he has a GoFundMe set up. It sounds like these floods have been really really bad. So anything you guys can do to support him, I think th this seems really difficult for him and his family. So give him some support. Um, we're really excited to hear his takes on the season, his takes on the past 34 th seasons. Um, so we're really excited to talk to him. As Phil said, Phil will unfortunately not be here next Wednesday. So it's going to be Alexa and Robert talking about Rick Devins for an hour and a half next mm -hmm. Wednesday. It's going to be super awesome. Um, so yeah, in the meantime, make sure to comment on this video with your vote for the MVP. Make sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Um, we have hit 4,500 followers on YouTube, which is super exciting. Keep hitting subscribe. Keep listening to us on iTunes. This was an amazing episode tonight, and we failed you guys with our internet issues. We will be better. Um, and we'll be back this Saturday. <laughs> Sunday. Sunday. Um, and we will be actually be back in about two minutes with our $20 patron updates for the power rankings. And then the highly anticipated $10 patron uh, showman's bracket in honor of March Madness. If you are, you are the only way you'll be able to see this is if you are or listen to this is if you are a ten dollar patron. So subscribe really quickly. It's gonna be super awesome. Or a twenty dollar patron. If you're a twenty dollar patron, patron, don't demote yes. yourself. Yes, stay where you are. Um, <laughs> and yeah, we have a lot of content tonight, and it's really late. And I'm super pumped. Bye, y'all. Right. Bye.